Okay, this is a continuation of section 1.4 for Mac 1105. We were working on quotients of complex numbers, and we had decided that in order to get the radical out of the denominator, we'd have to multiply by the conjugate of this binomial, which is 4 minus 3i. And deciding upon that conjugate, would also have to use it at the, in the numerator. So we're multiplying both the denominator and the no numerator by 4 minus 3i. Now in the bottom, because you're multiplying conjugates, you can use the shortcut square minus square. Again, you only need to be work looking at either this parenthesis or this one, not both, when you do the square minus square. So working on the bottom... I'm going to be squaring that front term to get 16, then squaring the back term, which has a 3 and an i as part of it. So squaring the 3, I get 9. Squaring the i, I get i squared, and then put a minus in between those two squares. Continuing to work with that, you would have negative 9 times negative 1 because i squared is defined as negative 1, so your denominator becomes 16, negative 9 times negative 1 is really positive 9. Okay, that negative gets dropped down so that this 9 becomes a negative 9 times negative 1 resulting in positive 9. Ultimately, the denominator ends up being 25. In the top, there is no shortcut for the product that you're going to be finding here. And in that case, you it is just traditional foiling, which is first times first, outer times outer, inner times inner, last times last. And you're going to follow those four arrows and do, the, do a product each time. So 3 times 4, 12. 3 times negative 3i, negative 9i. 2i times 4 is positive 8i. And then 2i times negative 3i is negative 6i squared. Then continuing with that so that you can simplify it, you have 12 in the front. The two middle terms combined would give you negative 1i. And then you, in the back you have negative 6. i squared is defined as negative 1, so they really have negative 6 times negative 1. Rewriting this back number as positive 6, you would have 12 plus 6, giving you 18 when you combine your real number portions, and a negative i as that middle term, as your imaginary term. You can split this up um, if it's required as 18 over 25 minus i over 25 if you want to write it as two separate fractions. Moving to the last page where we are doing various operations with negative square roots. And those problems begin with this first one that has square root of negative 25 minus square root of 81. Now the trick with these problems when they are presented in the beginning as negative square roots is to get them in their I form first, then perform whatever operation you're being asked to do. Like in this first one, we're being asked to subtract, but we're going to get these radicals in their I form first. We know that they are imaginary numbers because they have negatives underneath the square root. So the square root of this, well, for the number portion, it would be 5, but because there's a negative with it, that's actually 5i. Bring the minus down. Here it would be square root of 81 is 9, but because of the negative, it's 9i. And then, then you perform the operation of subtraction. So 5 minus 9 would be negative 4 of the i term, and that would be the final answer there. Okay, then moving to this next one. Again, we're going to get these numbers in their i form. This number here would be square root of 25 is 5, but because of the negative, it's actually 5i with a multiplier out front of 6. Drop down the plus sign and the 5, which is a multiplier. And then what we are multiplying by is what the square root of this is, which is 6i. So you have 30i here and another 30i for this back term. In combining those through addition, you have a result of 60i. 
Okay, moving to the next problem where you're being asked to square a binomial. You have two terms in there. Again, convert anything that can be converted to I form. Do that first, then carry out the operation that you're being asked to do, which is to square in this case. So this is also um, known as 3i. That would be this back term. Bring down the minus sign, bring down the negative 5. So we're going to be taking this binomial, negative 5 minus 3i, and squaring it. Now, you can do that, again, the long way by foiling it, or there also happens to be a shortcut for squaring a binomial. So far, I reviewed with you the shortcut for multiplying conjugates rather than foiling them, which is the long way. And this also has a shortcut. I'm going to do it the long way first. When you square something, it actually means to multiply it by itself. So it would be negative 5 minus 3i times that same exact expression. You are multiplying a quantity by itself, which means you're just repeating it. So if you're doing this by the longer foiling method, you would go first times first, as I've demonstrated in previous problems where I foiled, outer times outer, inner times inner, last times last. That's the foiling process. That would result in negative 5 times negative 5, 25. Negative 5 times negative 3i would be positive 15i. Then when you do inner times inner, these upside down arrows, that would be another 15i. Notice that that middle term doubles. In other words, it happens twice. And then the last product would come from negative 3i times negative 3i, which would be 9i squared. Simplifying that, I'm going to do that over here. You would have 25 in the front. You would have 15i and 15i because this 15i term happened twice. So you're doubling it to get 30i. And then rewriting this back term to understand that it is a real number, not an imaginary number. That says 9 times i squared, but i squared is really negative 1. So you have a positive 25 up here, but a negative 9 that you're combining with, with. So 25 take away 9 is going to be 16. Okay, we've combined those numbers and then drop that 30i into the answer for the final sum. Okay, moving to the next problem where we have more examples of partial square roots. Okay, a 12, there is no exact square root for that number, but you can take a square root for part of it. So I'm going to help you break that down. When you break down these numbers, you want to break them down into two things that multiply to give you this number, but at least one of them should be something that you can take a square root of. Like, for instance, a very familiar breakdown for 12 would be 4 times 3, and you can at least take the square root of 4. You're not going to be able to take the square root for both um, pieces of this product because otherwise it would be a perfect square. And there is that negative. So we're going to take the square root of the number we can take the square root of. It's a 4 while it's underneath the radical but comes out as a 2. We can also take the square root of that negative which is called i. So we've taken care of that, taken care of that, the 3 stays up underneath the radical. Moving to the 75, there is no exact square root for 75, but there is a partial square root. So again, you want to break this down into two numbers. At least one of them should be something that you can take the square root of if, that's, if, there, if one exists, and there does. The number 25 goes into 75 three times. So we can begin to work with this. There's a plus sign in between this term and this term, so drop that down. Underneath the square root, you have 25 times 3. That's equivalent to this 75, and I've just rewritten it like that. You can take the square root of 25. So while it's a 25 underneath the radical, it comes out as the square root. Square root of 25 is 5. You can also take this out from underneath the radical. It comes out as an i. So I've dealt with that, dealt with that, and the 3 stays underneath. 
when you are combining radicals, the only way you can actually combine them is if they're the same exact type of radicals, same kind of indices, same kind of radicands. And that is the case here. These are both square root of three terms. So the way that you combine them is it's going to be some amount of this particular term. These are called like terms because they both have a square root of three as part of the term. And the way that they're combined is by combining what's, what is considered the coefficients. So you're going to go 2i plus 5i, which is 7i for your final answer. Okay, moving on to this last problem where, again, we get to practice doing a partial square root. You really need practice with that because that begins to pop up quite a bit once you get to Mac 1105 as opposed to how often it popped up in Mac 1033. It starts to happen much more often as you progress in your mathematics. So let's see, what do I know a square root of that goes into 32? Well, 4 goes into 32, but go as high as you can. There's an even bigger number that goes into 32 that there's actually a square root of, and that is 16. So this is 16 times 2, because otherwise you're going to have to break it down twice. So try to think of the biggest number you can that divides into this and that there's actually a square root of for one of them, as I said. So we have an 8 out front, followed by a plus sign. These numbers are occurring underneath the radical, but we can take this one out as its square root. Square root of 16 is 4 dealt with that. Square root of negative is i, so I dealt with that. And there is no square root for the number 2, so it's going to stay up underneath the radical, divided by 20. Okay, this can be simplified because you can break this up into two smaller um, fractions, into two separate fractions, excuse me, that are going to end up being uh, fractions that you can reduce. So when that's possible, um, I mean, you can reduce in its present state right here. If there is a number that goes into this, this, and this, divides into all of those, then you can reduce that. You, can, you can't reduce this because this is about 1.4. It's, it's just a decimal that you can't really work with. So the number um, 2 or actually the number 4 would go into all of these. So we're going to divide this by 4. We're going to divide this coefficient by 4. Not that. And we're going to also divide this denominator by 4. So you can do it all in a compact form like this. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4i divided by 4. You would just go 4 divided by 4. That would be 1i with the square root of 2 hanging off the back of it over 5. And you can write this as one big compact quotient, or you can separate it into two fractions. 2 over 5, you have to see what they require when you go into my math lab, plus i times the square root of 2 over 5. If they ask you to write it in standard form, you're going to want to write it like this, where you're writing your real portion, that'll be the first fraction, and then you're then writing your imaginary portion. So this is what we call the A plus BI, which is also known as the standard form of a complex number. And that concludes the work with section 1.4.